Hi, my name is Mark, and this time we're going to talk about computer organization and computer architecture. Now, the question is, what's the difference between the two? Let me put this, let me put this in a context where you can understand it faster. And say, for example, you have somebody or you have a, a rich person who wants to build a huge building. What he does is he hires first an architecture and also hires a civil engineer. Now, another question is what are the roles of these professionals? First of all, the computer architecture or the computer architect, sorry, the, the architect, okay, the architect is gonna be responsible for the design, for the whole design of the building. And when it comes to the implementation of the design, that is now the role of the civil engineer. Okay, so the design of the building is the architect and the implementation of the design, the functionality of the design or the functionality of the building at the end is going to be implemented or performed by the civil engineer. So in the context now of computer organization and computer architecture, the architect, the building architect, is on the part of the computer architecture. And the part where the architecture is how it is going to be implemented is the part of the civil engineer who is going to take charge in making the design work okay according to the functionality of the building okay so back to our subject matter which is uh, we have all the content here on the screen the comparison be between computer organization and computer architecture first is we're going to tackle what is computer architecture in the context of our lesson so computer architecture is the conceptual design and fundamental operational structure of our computer system. It is the practical art of selecting and interconnecting hardware components to create computers that meet the functional performance and cost goals. This is according to Wikipedia. Another is from William Stalling. Computer architecture is the design of the systems visible to the assembly level or to the level where um, the programmer designs the the hardware okay I'm, I'm i'm sorry the programmer it is the view of a programmer on how the design works okay or those attributes that have the direct impact on logical execution of a program so um included in this uh, the topics that are included in this subject matter under computer architecture is instruction set. Okay, uh, there are a lot of instruction sets, and, and there, there are different types of instruction sets. Okay, and we're going to discuss discuss this as we go along the way. Number of bits used for data representation. Example: the numbers, the characters, and then the I/O mechanisms. I/O Stands for what? Input and output mechanisms. Next is addressing memory techniques. So when these topics are uh, being discussed, it is covered under under computer architecture. So a closer, closer look, say for example, you have an Intel chipset. This is the processor Intel Pentium. So we now have the Intel Pentium is way back the before processors now we have i this the i series already the i's i3 i5 i7 so those are the ones that we have now and you have there the generations so under but um despite of the advances of our processors you still have the basic um functionalities to that and these are just being enhanced by the upgrading of the hardware or of the 
processors. But basically, you have the same operations even with the older processors. So, for example, you have your, you have here the Intel Pentium. So you have a control under that is uh, that's under the CPU, okay, or central processing unit. Always remember that. When you say C CPU, it's the processor, it's the processing unit. It's not the box itself. That's what we always, um, that's how we make a mistake always. Say, for example, uh, even if it's an issue with the RAM or the random access memory, but since it's inside the box, you say, sira yung CPU ko. But basically, it's just the RAM that is defective. So let's try to use the term correctly. So when you say CPU, you are referring to the processor, okay? Which in this picture we have here, the CPU, you have here these two units, control unit and arithmetic logic unit. So what's the difference here? Arithmetic from the term itself, to put it in the in easier in plain definition, arithmetic is you have um, uh, computations, like for example, addition, subtraction, division. So you have there the arithmetic logic unit. The other one is control unit. Okay, so you th this has something to do with uh, the instructions already. Okay, whether to move or to to um, control the flow of the data within the system, okay? So that is a close. Another one is this CPU is basically in control, okay, of the connection between the input devices. Say, for example, your keyboard, your mouse here, okay? What other input devices do we have? Microphone, that one, the one that we're using during... Um, uh, our meetings, okay? Anything that has, that lets data inside your system is input. Output is, uh, an example for that is this monitor, okay? Uh, the question, another famous question for this, how about the scanner? What do you consider a scanner for? If, um, is it an input device or an output device? What do you think? Well, if it's a single function scanner, say, for example, it just scans and it doesn't print, okay, definitely it's for input device because you put something on the scanning bed and then it the, the image goes into the system. But if you're talking about the ones that are famous right now, the multiple function printers where you can scan, where you can print, you can um, uh, you can perform other functions, okay? So that's uh, a combination of the input and output devices. Even um, it has, they have their own separate processors, small processors for that, for that matter, okay? Another is, here we go to the types of storage. Famous ones are the memory and the external storage where the memory is a primary kind of storage. The external storage is the secondary. Okay, to give you a quick review, why is memory considered as the primary and why is external storage considered as secondary? Why? Because your computer won't work without the memory. Will never work if the memory or the RAM is detached from the computer system. Your computer will not boot up. Okay? But uh, with regards to the external storage, even if you don't connect the hard disk or a flash drive for as long as the memory is present, in your computer system, your system will still boot up. Okay? 
That's why it is called the memory, the RAM. Specifically, the RAM is considered as the primary storage device. Okay, so I hope you understood that. Okay, next now is, here we go. So the previous one was, what was discussed was computer architecture now. We have the computer organization. So, on the standpoint of building a building, okay, we're now talking of the role of a civil engineer, okay, the implementation of the design, okay. So from the from this definition, we see that uh, computer organization describes the data paths, the data processing elements, and data storage elements. Organization is how architecture is implemented, okay? How it is implemented, the architecture is implemented. How much cache, memory, control signals, interfaces between computer and peripherals, and memory technology is being used. Another comparison that we I'd like to show you is this one. Is Let me just open that. Um, and sorry okay so i hope you can see this part here let me just uh -huh. okay so as you can see on your screen uh, this is the comp uh, the comparison between computer architecture and computer organization so in computer architecture, it is a blueprint for design and implementation of computer system. It provides functional details and behaviors of system. Okay, so it deals with the question what to do. Okay, and the next is organization. This is how operational parts of computer system are linked together. It implements the provided computer architecture and computer organization deals with how to do it. It has to do with the implementation. So um, a detailed comparison between the two is that under okay, you have your purpose, you have your target, you have design, actors, and order. So for purpose, what's the purpose of computer architecture versus organization? For the architecture, it explains what a computer should do. For the organization, it explains how the computer works. Okay, okay. For target, the computer architecture provides functional behave behavior of computer system, while under organization, it provides structural relationships. The term here is the keyword here is relationship. Next is computer architecture deals with high level design, while in organization, in the low level design. Okay, because we now have to implement the high level design actors uh, under computer architecture are hardware parts while in the organization is how the hardware is going to perform okay performance of the hardware uh, order computer architecture is designed first yes and computer organization is started after finalizing the computer architecture so I hope this clear things clear clears up things between your between your conception misconception of what is the difference between computer organization and computer architecture. Going back, okay. So uh, as a review of your system components. Uh, central processing unit you have here the main mem memory and input devices auxiliary storage so what's the most important component here that links all of this cpu main memory input auxiliary storage output devices it is the the one in the middle or the buses okay the buses because i'm not really sure but as it can be understood by some the bus a bus a tr is a transport um, vehicle that transports 
personal or people from one point to another. And I think that is how it should be seen also in the context of uh, computer architecture and organization. Okay, so what the bus, uh, the bus or the buses is doing is it's like a highway, a digital highway where all these data are uh, goes and are transferred going from one part, which is one part to another, which may be um, either of some CPU main memory or input actual input devices or auxiliary auxiliary storage or output devices. So it is really very important that you have a bus. Now the question is, how do we find the bus in a computer system? Basically, if you take a look in, in a um, uh, view, okay, in a motherboard, you have here, I'm not sure, uh, I'm not sure if you can really see the lines here, the like a bronze or golden some of them are in green in other motherboards these lines here represent the buses which also includes actually the data cables okay the cables that connect say for example this cable this one this is a ribbon cable this is a part of a of the bus system which transports data from the hard disk or from the optical device like cd-rom to the to the system okay i will not say that it will just be um, moved to and controlled by the processor but it goes from one of the components to another okay the instructions the memory okay that's why it's called a system okay so these are computer components um, same architecture, different organization. So there's a like a family of of architecture, and then how it is implemented is that's why we have the the idea of they they can be in the same type of architecture but different organization. That is the the difference of how they were organized of or how they were implemented. So an example for this one. Is, for this situation is almost every program that can run on any original Pentium or 8086 can run on Pentium 4. So it's a compatibility. Um, if you understood it proper, if, if you cannot absorb it yet, the idea is compatibility. Okay? So the, the same type of architecture or that means they are in the compatible type of architecture. Okay, All computers in the Intel Pentium series have the same architecture. Each version of the Pentium has different organization or implementation. Now, this has something to do already with um, uh, how it will be implemented. So others, the lower versions have fewer... Um, let's say, for example, the processing speed is lesser and memory capacity is lesser compared to the higher versions or higher models, which has a faster, even faster processing speed and also higher capacity of memory, including the cache. Uh, so that has something to do with how it is implemented. So that means it's under organization architecture does not change in the different model but its organization changes with the changing technology okay so this topic we're going to brush through this because we're going to discuss this in detail with the succeeding lessons so the basic function of a computer you have here the operating environment. So you have source going in, destination is going back. Okay. So data movement apparatus, input and output or I.O. And then the control mechanism is the one man who manages the resources and orchestrates the performance of its other functional parts. 
and ability to store short-term and long-term data is under data storage facility. So you have so you have here the it includes now all the types of storage devices, may it be primary or secondary. Okay, and then data processing facility is going to be responsible in processing the data. Okay, um, so these are the internal structure of a computer. Oh, sorry, the basic function of the computer. Next is, these are the four, four types of operations. Um, you, you can... Okay, see, the computer can function as a data movement device. So there are four, as mentioned, four types of operations. The first one is transferring data or storage device. Next is data processing involves storage data and between storage and external environment. Storage and external environment. So example, an example is the flow of data from movement to control, storage, processing, and then going back. And then next one is movement, control, storage, and then does not do the, any processing because there will just be copying or moving of data. So you have this bidirectional arrow. It goes to the storage and goes back to the movement facility. Next is, uh, it doesn't go to movement, storage, control, process, storage, control, process, storage, control, process. So process gets and fetches data from the storage and control mechanism. And finally, you have here from uh, movement of um, going to control and then process and then put in the storage. And then storage can be processed again and then will be moved or um, transferred to another device or a component. So you see, these are the four types of operations. And finally, the last slide that we're going to discuss for this session is the internal structure, structure of a computer. And I know that you're familiar with this already, but let's just uh, discuss this in... Uh, more details. So, this is supposed to be T, Central Processing Unit or the CPU controls the operation of a computer and performs its data processing functions, referred to as the processor. Another is the main memory. It stores data. Okay. And uh, as you all know, main memory is a volatile memory. Main memory or in more specifically speaking, you're talking about the RAM, okay? And if you recall it from your previous lessons, that the main memory plays a vital role in the execution or um, the performance as a whole of your computer system. Why? Because it serves as a work area for your processing. So the bigger your memory is, it's like you have a table. The memory is your table. And then the jobs that are put on that table are the jobs that can be loaded into the memory. That means, the, that, means that if you have a bigger memory, you also, it also means that you have a bigger table where you can put all the jobs at the same time and you can work on it at this point work on it not necessarily at the same time but um, it increases and optimizes your performance if you have a bigger memory uh, next is IO or input output moves data between computer and its external environment okay system interconnection Mechanism that provides for communication among CPU, main memory, and I.O. In other words, this is the bus. 
system, the system interconnection. Okay, so as you can see here, this is the computer and in a magnified view under the computer you have here input main memory CPU, I.O. Main, main memory CPU and is connected by the bus or the system interconnection. That's why the bus is really very important. Okay, so for this session, we're going to end this one here. And we're, go we're going to discuss more on the next meeting. Thanks, guys, for listening. Have a nice day.